exactly is it in the pot? Where exactly is grain to be obtained in the pot? In the entire pond, actually, it is there in the entire pond. There is no particular place. It is all pervasive. It is all pervasive. So, after the clay, the pot came into existence. When it is in existence, just to take away the clay, then will there be anything of the pot left? Pot is only a name. The real object is only the Brahman. Brahman alone is. And all the Nama Rupa, the names that you are giving and the forms that you are seeing, that they are all part of the Adhyasa, part of the superimposition, part of the illusion created by the universal through his power known as Maya or Prakriti. So, all the, you take any object here, he is very much present in it, he exists. You cannot say Brahman exists, it is wrong. You cannot say Atman exists, no, they don't exist. If you say tree exists, yes, it's a fact, tree exists. If I say this pillar exists, the pillar exists. I have already told you about it. But why can't you say the Brahman exists? The tree exists today, tomorrow it can go to existence. The pot exists today, the pot can go to existence tomorrow. But the Brahman is not such exist. So he is not in that manner. So he cannot say he exists. He is not existential. He is existent. He is the existent which is present in all these things which exist. So all the vastus are containing him. They are there. That ornus is there only because of his presence there. Only because of the presence of the Supreme Being, the Atman, the Brahman in it. That is why. So he can be called as existence. You cannot call, you can, you can never say that God exists or the Supreme Being exists. No. He is existence. He is the very essence of all the objects. Their very existence is dependent on Him. He is their existence. He provides their existence. He is the material cause. So, Akhilam Vastu Tad Yuktam. All the materials are constituted by Him. He is the main and the only constituent of all the objects in the world. But, unfortunately, we are seeing the various forms. We are seeing the animals, we are seeing the, we are seeing the squirrels, we see the elephants, we see the monkeys, we are unable to see the Brahman. It requires a particular process. Just as even though the ghee existed in the milk, you were unable to see it, but it required a specific modus operandi to extract it out of it. Yes, in a similar way, a special process. And we have already dealt with the process. The process is the one of the oldest conventional and the operatic <coughs> process. The process consists of Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana. First we have defined it either from the mouth of the preceptor and uh, we may get it fortified by our knowledge and scriptures. And then you have to apply your logic and your reasoning and then make it completely yours. You should be completely convinced of whatever you have read from the scriptures of what the Guru has said. You have to go on remembering it again and again. Apply all your logic against it. Become the devil's advocate. And then only you will be able to make it your own. You will be 100% convinced. When you are convinced, no problem. Then you know pretty well that the entire world amounts to nothing, absolutely. And the Brahman alone is worth having. Brahman alone is worth striving for. Then, obviously, you will have all the enthusiasm. You will never look back at this world, at these evanescent pleasures of the world, which come and go. You would like to have that infinite bliss, that absolute bliss, which once acquired will never leave. It's already there. It's a question of recognition. So, then, 
So the sub portion, you know, the Brahman is called the sub, the chit or ananda. He, he is constituted of these three attributes. See, these are all again concepts which do not touch even his periphery, but we have no better substitute, so we have to go by that. He is beyond all. So we have to use whatever little vocabulary we have. And none of the vocabulary is capable of catching him as he is. But just as I told you, according to Shaka Chandra Nyaya, where in order to show the moon to the child, you only say, look here, see the branch four feet above is the moon. It's not four feet above, it's billions of feet above. So in a similar way, in order to get a point only, we say Sat Chitta Ananda. So the Sat portion, the existing portion, we already now see. Then, even its chit portion is in all. How? Yavaharas chidan vidaha. Whatever transactions you meet, your own, I eat. If you are unconscious, will you be able to eat? So it is that conscious which makes you eat. You breathe. If you are unconscious, you won't be able to breathe. So every activity you do is all being done through that universal. It is that universal who is behind you. So he is it that is motivating, motivating you for all actions. He is the he is the very one who activates you. And so he said, the nature of the Brahman has been defined in the Mahabharata as the great aphorisms of the Upanishads. One of them is called the Prajnana Brahma. What actually is Brahman? Because he was telling Tattvamusi, you are the Brahman. First of all, you tell me what the Brahman is. And then you say, Aham Brahmasmi. Tell me who is the Brahman is. And when I asked him, you didn't define. You gave me the location. I am Atma Brahman. I don't want the location. Please tell me something about me. There is only one sentence. Prajnanam Brahman. That super consciousness, that is Brahman. What is it? What do you mean by the super consciousness? What is his role? How can we recognize it? You cannot recognize the electricity by its form. It has no form. It is not black, it is not white, it is not long, it is not short. You can't find anything about the electricity. But you can always find out this karya, its effects. So, here, what are the things that prajnana does? The prajnana has been defined. Yene chate, shrinotidam, jighrati, vyakaroti cha, swadu swadu vijarati, sa prajnanam What is prajnana? That which sees. Do you think that your eyes are able to see anything? But for the Atman it cannot see. That is it says, Yam Chakshushara Vashyati, Yena Chakshogumchi Vashyati. The Ken Upanishad starts by saying, Who is it that propels all these Indriyas? Who is it that makes the eye fall on the particular Rupa? Who is it that makes the ear hear? Then in answer he says, Yes, Chakshushara Pashyati. The eyes cannot see, but Yena Chakshogumchi Pashyati. The one who makes it function. The entire I owe it to him. It is just like a machine cannot do anything. The printing machine will lie idle unless the electricity passes through it. It is the electricity which makes all the machines do. It is that electricity which makes the doctor do his function. It makes the teacher do his function. It makes the engineer do his function. It makes the clerk do his function. It makes <coughs> the yeah, cover do his function. All the functions are being done through the universal. The individual is not the doer. The individual is only a witness. He is only conscious. Conscious is his only quality. He can't do a single thing. You can't lift your little finger, but for the open worst thing. So, the one who makes you hear, the one who makes you see, the one who makes you act everywhere, and the one who knows that this is good, this is not good. The discriminative faculty, where from does it come? It comes from the, we call it the Chidabhasa, 
what is Chida Bhasa? Just a reflection of one of the smallest rays of the Satchidananda that goes and hits against the Buddhi and then it gets all its uh, uh, functional faculty of discrimination. So we go to the next one. So he says, we are daily seeing it. You may not see it as such, but you are seeing its effective reason. You are seeing its existence as well because all the things exist. There is nothing which can exist without that existence. So he is the pure existence, the pure being of all the objects. Then similarly, without him, nobody can lift his little finger. So the Vyavaharas and the transactions of every day, we do it because of that consciousness. So the consciousness is always with us, with every object. And so you might say, what is the consciousness for this mind? As said already, the electricity you think it is only a in the fan and in these points where the lights off, you're wrong. It is then the entire circuit. But it is manifest here. You are able to see its manifestation, its karya, when that it lies unmanifest. In a similar way, the Brahman is, but it lies dormant. It lies unmanifest in certain places, while it manifests itself very clearly, perceivably in other places, perceptibly in other places. Now he comes to another one. What is the Brahman again? See, we have already done the modus of right. They have already discovered who is the Jeevan Buddha, he has seen the Brahman. And now lastly he wants to conclude it so that we should go to sleep with the idea of Brahman in our mind. So in order to make us all Jeevan Muktas, these shlokas are true. Even by just chatting them again and again and again and again, it can take us to what is called the Akhandakara Brahma Vritti or the Brahmakara Vritti. Yes, it is through the thought process also that you can achieve that. That was the original procedure given in our Upanishads. Even though there is the other process where you state the reach of the, you, you read the state of the no mind, which is called the Umbani Bhava. But the other process, as per our traditional methods, are that you go, you go on cultivating. Now that you have got this pressure against all the items of the world, there cannot be any distraction. You are completely disgusted with all the items of the world. They are all like our vomit. Who would like to take back the vomit? So in that case, you are capable now of completely concentrating. Now that you are convinced that Brahman alone is what the striving for. So only think of him, think of him, think of him in all his spirit. Brahman is, has no center. His circumference is everywhere. But at the same time, he is dimensionless. We'll come to it later. There is that. So we saw in that process, you go on thinking of him, that very thought, when it becomes intense, it penetrates through the veil of the avidya, penetrates through the veil of the ignorance, and the veil is start asunder. And simultaneously with the destruction of the avidya, this thought process of Brahma, the Brahmakara Vritti, this modification of the mind, where is only contemplating on Brahman alone, that also disappears. It exhausts itself, it burns itself off while burning away the entire avidya. Then what is left? What exists is only left. It is the existence which is left, it is the Satchitananda which is left, it is the Brahman, the Supreme Being, the Eternal Absolute, the Supreme Consciousness that alone is left. Right? Please tell us something about its dimensions. How is it uh, 20 feet long? Is it uh, no, 30 feet wide? So we would like to have something See, the scientist is asking, please tell us the dimensions. We are very very to overcome you. Anand vastu lamakraswam. Anand vastu lamakraswam. Adhidhyama jamantyayam. Arupa guna varnapyam. Tatbram hetya vadhari. No, that is the Brahma. Which is the Brahma? Anand. It is 
not as simple as a subatomic quantum. I mean, it is not simply, absolutely not visible, just like a subatomic particle. Subatomic particle, you can see it only through the electronic microscope, the discharge tubes and other things like, you can't see it through regular, and it is not like that. Because Brahman, if only you want, you can see it in no time. It takes as much time as for plucking a flower to realize the Brahman. It is so near to you, yet so far. Asthulam, you cannot translate this gloss. I said it is not certain. Then can I see? Is it gloss? No, sorry. You can't call it also gloss. So you cannot call it as as simple as a subatomic particle with electron with protons or mesons. You can't call it like that. Nor can you say it is as gross as a mic, as a fan, as my body like. No, it is not so. Then, akrasvam adhikam. Akrasvam means that which is small. It is a shock, say one inch, two inch, one centimeter. No, you cannot call it small in its length. Then, is it very big? Twenty meters? One kilometer long? No, Adib Gham, you cannot also call it long. You cannot call it sharp, you cannot call it long. You cannot call it subtle, you cannot call it cross. Then what you see? There are two things only we can tell about him. Number one, he had always been there. When was the time when there was no existence? Existence had always been there. And no existence can remain unless there is awareness of it. Otherwise, how do you say it remains? It requires an awareness. So the awareness of existence, Satya and Chit had always been there. So it is Ajar. It was unborn. It had no cause. It is without cause because it was always there. And it is that existence which created all the existentials. So as such, it had been there earlier than all the creations. Creations of time, creations of space, beyond that. What actually was there? Our rishis were bad enough. They were not ordinary sages. To that extent, they had the temerity to conceive what remained before the time of space, before there was any creation, what was there? It has been written in some eight or ten hymns, which are known as Nasadiya Sutta in the Rig Veda. The Nasadiya Sutta was popularized by Vivekananda <coughs> during his lectures in the states in America. They are some of the best hymns where they are trying to conceive of what would have been there. It's like that. So, Ajam, it was never born. It had no cause. It had always existed. All right, it was never born, but up to which millennium it will remain? When will it exhaust itself? Even the sun, they say, one day it will exhaust itself. It's whether it is going on dissipating life, and one day it will be completely exhausted. So will there be such a time for this Brahman? No, he is abhyaya, he is immutable, he is imperishable, he is unexpendable. He remains as he is, he is abhyaya. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Give me some description. What color he is? Tell me what is his form like. Is he like an animal? Give us some form. Is he gaseous? Is he liquid like? Is he a solid? Come on, tell us something. Rupa. Then Guna. Tell us something about his character. Varna. To which species he belongs? To which genre he belongs? At least he tell us. He belongs to animal kingdom. She belongs to the vegetable kingdom. Something like that. Please, tell us something about it. Sorry, we can't explain. Arupa, he is formless. He is formless. That is why the famous Dekshramurti, 
Whose temple is there just uh, some two, three buildings away from our uh, ashram's gate? That is what the Shinamukti temple. The Shinamukti is the incarnation of Lord Shiva, who was supposed to be the embodiment of knowledge. He was the giver of knowledge. He was the first guru who started the tradition of a guru in his heart. Sadashiva Samaranda, Shankaracharya Mandana. So he started, Shankaracharya carried on in the light of knowledge. And up to our own gurus, or Ramana, whom so you are going to your guru, and it is still running. So Dakshinamurti, how, why is it called Dakshinamurti? Dakshina means south. He was facing the south. Anybody who gives knowledge has to be on the north pole. North pole is the positive pole where he sits and then disseminates knowledge. So the whoever sits in the north pole, he will be facing the south. So the Shinamurti was facing the south. Not only that, we all we are all afraid of facing the south. I don't know about other places, but in Tamil Nadu. They are terrifically afraid. They will say in the night, if you then, no, 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 from childhood we have been built. This is the place of Yama where nobody wants to go. Don't say that. This is the other way. So, and the Lord is the first to say, come on, you come with me. Uh, I will make you face the south and nothing will happen to you. So, he was called the Kalakala, the, what you may call, the Yama for the Yama. Death for death. So even death used to be afraid of him. He is called the soul. That is Dakshina. Then what is the next portion? Many will say Murti. Today when I ask one gentleman, what does it mean? He says, Dakshina, Murti is Dakshina. I said, please tell me. Krishna plus Murti, how do you pronounce? He said, Krishna Murti. Then Dakshina plus Murti, how will you pronounce? It should be Dakshina Murti. Then he said, Dakshina plus Amur. He is formless, he doesn't have a form. He is the supreme being who doesn't have a form. We are given form even to the formless. <laughs> but as I said, there is nothing wrong in it. So long as we are in the body, so long as this body is true, all the forms we have considered the God, they are all true. And all these forms have not only been conceived of the Dhanashlokas, from the days of great Maharaji they have been conceived, they have all attained a lot of potency. So the moment you think of it, it is the Supreme Being who takes that form and it can come before. So don't think it is something which is meant for the KG. It is as good as Nirmana Nasmadhi, when once you reach it, afterwards effortlessly we will reach that Amukti also. So never, never underestimate these Shagunas. Then, Arupa Gunavaranatyam. He has got no names. He cannot be described through any form. He cannot be described through any jina or any species because he is unique. He doesn't belong to any gender species life. And in other words, he is called Anirvachaniya. Anirvachaniya is a theory which has been propounded in the quantum physics sometimes in 1960 or 70. Perhaps Schrodinger, Heisenberg, some of his colleagues have done it and they call it the law of uncertainty. Because in the subatomic particles, if they find the velocity, they can't locate it where it is like. If they locate it, they can't find its velocity. Finally, in sheer desperation, fortunately many of the scientists they didn't have hair, otherwise you know they would have just get torn it. Because they were in such a despair, finally they will have to say, yes, it cannot be described, there is nothing which it is. That Brahmi and Kavadhari, cultural, know that, that's the Brahmi. Then 61, Yad Bhasa Bhasa Dev Gadi, Bhasir Yad Guna Bhasya Dev, Yena Sarva Vidam Bhati, Tad Brahme Javadhari. Yes, this is the 
role of the groom. What is the role of the groom? She is the one who makes all the lights shine. The fire, the sun, the moon. Whoever is giving you light, you are thinking it is the sun who shines. No, they are all shining through the borrowed light from the Atman. It is the Atman who has illumined them. And it is that reflection from that which comes to us, which we consider the sunlight or the moonlight or the light of the fire. So, Natat Bhasa Yate Suryo Nasachanko Na Pavakaham But none of these things, neither the sun can illuminate him, nor the moon can illuminate him. He illuminates all these things, but none of these things which are illuminated by him are capable of revealing even a portion of the brahman. They cannot reveal because all the light, see the light and knowledge are normally used in identical way by us. Figuratively, the knowledge and light are on the sea. Whenever you want to ask some knowledge on some chapters which you don't understand. You are sure, will you please throw some light on it? You don't take a torch and throw the light, you only light. So knowledge and light have always been considered similar and whenever a person has got that absolute knowledge, you always say, he is shining with the effulgence of Vidya. So Vidya is the shine. Yes, it lends a shine also physically. The Shweta Sarupadrasha says that a person who is just on the first lap of the yoga, you need not go to much length. Even then, he gets a shine. In the Gita, in the 14th Adhyaya, he says, how to know whether you are full of the quality of harmony and light. That is a Sattva Guru. Then he says, when all the doors of perception in your body, all the senses of perception, when they are all shining in the light, take it that you have progressed well and the Sattva Guna is dominant in you. So, Yad Bhasa, by whose light, that is by which Atman's, the Brahman's light, Arkadi Bhasate, Arka means the sun, Arkadi means sun, etc. That is the sun, moon, fire, and any other thing could be Venus, it could be Saturn, whatever we consider light, like. the stars which are shining. So all of them, Bhasati, they are shining through the light which is lent by the Atma. It is the Atman which being, which activates them, which lends them their effulgence. Bhasyaihi yattu na bhasyati. But yattu, this Atman, Na bhasyate, it cannot be revealed, it cannot be lit, it cannot be illumined by bhasmihi, by those which are made to shine by the Atma, that is the sun and moon, etc. They cannot. Yena sarva midam bhati, tad brahmet kavadhari. I have already told you that from the Kenom Prishat last time that Yes Chakshu Shana Paschati Yena Chakshu Kumche Paschati Tade Bhabrahmatvam Vidhi Medam Yadidam Upatate Yachotre Dhanashrnoti Yena Shrotra Midam Chitam Tade Bhatvam Vidhi Medam Yadidam Upatate So the Kenom Prishat says that all these things, they are all being uh, lit only by the Atman. Atman alone makes your mind work. It makes your prana work. It makes your eye work. So, it is that which does all these things. We have already read in the Hastamalaka Sutra. There is a beautiful one, seventh there. Then he says, the mind, the eyes, 
They are not illumined. They are illumined by the Atman. They cannot illumine. They cannot reveal that. And that self-evident principle, know it, it is Brahma. It is a repetition of the same idea over here. So, yena sarva midam bhati. Because of Kim, all these objects of the world are made. You think that these world objects, you are able to see him, you are able to see this, you are able to see the pillar, you are able to see Bhagavan. Only because of the sunlight, you are sorely mistaken. It is the Brahman who is behind. It is the Brahman who activates him. It is the Brahman who has lent. Yeah, yeah, we have very small, infinitesimal part of his power. Now we come to 62. Svaya mantar bhagir vyapya hai. Vasa yanna ke yandakati Brahma prakachate vanhi Pratapta yasa pindavati Again he is going to repeat the same idea of the Sarvaka Tattva, the omnipresence of the law, the all-pervasiveness of the Supreme Being. How it is everywhere. But at the same time, it is not visible. So he has to explain that. So previously he gave the example of the we being visible, the we being, though not visible, but its presence it was very much in the men. Now he is going to give another analogy because it is very, very difficult sometimes. See, many of us are unable to understand. See, I have already told you once, even Adi Shankara was asking the same question. Adi Shankara is asking in the Anand Lahiri, Sir, Eko Varjabandha, Shitatalo Yaptam, Bhomandalam, Tamomandalam. Look here, there is only one sun which is here. And during the night there is a pitch darkness, especially during Amavasya and especially if the electricity board of Thirvanam and it will not cooperate with us. And this has happened two days back for three four hours. So we have a blackout. And what will be the problems like you can well understand? So it's extremely difficult. So he says, what is Surya Prabha? That one sun in the early morning, Dikwa Lochana Gochara Bhavati Saha. He is able to peer through the dense darkness early in the morning and then he becomes visible. If one sun is capable of piercing through the entire darkness and becoming visible, there are hymns which praise the Lord as Koti Surya Samak Prabha. He is equal to crores of suns. It is really a pity that crores of suns are unable to pierce through this darkness. Well, he himself answered it after a little reflection. The question is wrongly put, it cannot have a right answer. Rather put this question in this way and see. If one sun is capable of removing all this darkness, and if crores of suns are unable to remove this darkness, that big darkness, then just imagine how intense and dense, dense and perhaps accumulated for crores of birth and that you are having it where even crores of suns are unable to remove. So it is the your own fault that you accumulated so much, you have had never taken in all this, taken any action in all your births to remove the darkness. But as you have just started. So Swayamantar Bahir Yapya by itself. It is pervasive both in inside as well as outside. Every atom of every particle of every object, it is made up of this. That is all. Because ultimately there is no object. All the objects you are seeing, they are all to the illusion. It is all Brahman alone. Brahman alone through the illusion, just as you yourself in your dream, you convert yourself into a hundred elephants which came in your dream. Back from this hundred elephants came in a small room. It was your own concoction, your own fabrication of your own mind. 
That's all. So similarly, all these objects which you are seeing, they are the fabrication of the castle, the cosmic mind, who is running a drama. These are all the various dramas. One drama is yours, one drama is mine, one drama is his. It's just like a juggler who is able to operate 20 balls together. The cosmic being is able to operate millions of TVs side by side, and through his computer he is operating, and we are all running here and there in the TV. We are the TV film actors. Swayam Antar Bahir Then what else does it do, this Brahman? Bhasayan Akhilam Jagati. It is that which reveals all the objects of the world. Bhasayan, it illuminates the entire world. Akhilam, the entire Jagat, the world, the entire world. Brahma Prakashati. The Brahman is shining like that. Through the shines of all, you can't, you don't know that it is the Brahman who is shining. You are mistaken through a jasa, through the superposition, that is the sun which is shining, that it is the moon which is shining, but it is actually the Brahman. He gives an example. Now it's a different example. The example is there is an iron ball. That iron ball is put in there. Furnish and it gets heated. It gets heated to such an extent that the entire ball outside it is shining red and you are able to see the body heated. You are able to see the fire in it. But are you really able to see the fire? No, there are no flames. So where is the where, where exactly is that fire inside it? The fire is everywhere. And there is another classical example which comes in the Chandogya Upanishad. Shweta Ketu, the disciple, who has returned after study for 18 years under a Gurukula, he came with a certificate, Acharya. And then he told his father, I have learned everything to be learned. Then he is asking, Have you heard of Brahman? He said, No. They taught me anatomy, they taught me astronomy, they taught me physics, they taught me chemistry. Brahma, they have never heard. He said, then what is the value of Indians? When you have not learned the Brahma, you know. Then they begin to teach him, because he is incomplete in his knowledge. So first to tell him, in order to tell him where the Brahman is, he asked him to bring a plate full of water. Then he says, Put a little of salt in it and just dissolve it. Get dissolved. And it has become completely dissolved. There is nothing, no speck. It is violent. Then he asked him, point me out where the salt is. He said, Father, it is not possible. What are you talking? It is not possible. It is everywhere. He said, Brahman is like that. It is everywhere. It is mixed up in all. So in the same way, he says, Vanhi Pratapta, Vanhi Pratapta, Ayasa Pinda Ayasa Pinda means an iron ball. Pinda means a ball. Ayasa Pinda like an iron ball. Santapta, which has been intensely heated. An intensely heated iron ball. By what? Vanhi Pratapta. It was heated by fire. So just as the fire, after heating, it is not visible to the eyes in the form of a conversation or a flame, but still it is all pervasive inside the ball, but in a subtle way, in the same way the Brahman is. Uh, yes, with this we will stop. And we will just read out the next one. Jagat Vilakshanam Brahma Brahmanon Yanakichana Brahman Yadvati Jen Mitya Yadavarumari Chika. So here he only tells two things. Brahman and the world are 100% different. There is absolutely nothing common between them. And 
many Mahatmas used to see. Yes, in the beginning, you do your circus with one foot on the wire of the wall and with one foot on the wire of spirituality. But that day has to come that if you want God, you have to leave the world entirely, you want its entirety. It can't be helped. The decided opinion of all the scriptures as well as the So, take a collection of Brahman. There is nothing else that Brahman, Brahman alone means. Then what did you say? Then Jagat is different. That means Jagat exists. No, it doesn't exist. It only exists in a dream. It is a dream. So it is an illusion. So an illusion has no existence. So what exists in reality is only the dream, only the law. And in case you are seeing something else other than human, you are seeing the fan, you are seeing the peacock, then you take it, it is only an appearance. It is just like the mirage. Marumarichika means the mirage which is seen in the deserts where it looks as if there is a water. You run, you are athirst for water. You run and go and see that. There is only the same shining sand. There is no water. There is only a reflection from somewhere. That's all. So, this will 